the Southwest Folklife Alliance is affiliated with the University of Arizona. And the University of Arizona is built on the land of indigenous people. And today Arizona is a home to 22 federally recognized tribes. And Tucson is the original home place of the Tohon O'odham and the Yaqui people who have been here since time immemorial. So um, I'm just gonna get right into a little screen share and uh, walk you through some of the steps of the nomination process, which goes over criteria and how you use our submittable portal. And then we'll take a little break if you have questions at that point. And then I will also be going through the full application process so that you can see what comes after if you are invited past the nomination process uh, point. So, um, but so there will be time for questions as we go. Um, and let me just start by sharing my screen. Uh, we'll go to the second part. And actually we're gonna have Nelda talk for a little bit about the mission. Yes, thank you all for joining us today. So uh, thank you so much for that land acknowledgement, Denise. And I just wanna add on to that uh, land acknowledgements are a beautiful gesture, but the work comes in doing right and in action. And that's why we come together. And that's why we're here today to create spaces of trust, justice, and healing. And our mission here at the Southwest Folklife Alliance is we build more equitable and vibrant communities by celebrating the everyday expressions of culture, heritage, and diversity rooted in the greater Southwest and US-Mexico border corridor. Just to go through the, our Master Apprentice Artist Program objectives, one of our main objectives is to maintain and preserve folk life heritage practices throughout the Southwest region, support the economic development of heritage and folk artists and artisans through direct monetary support, build awareness of the diverse folk and heritage practices in our region. And this is one of our uh, former master artist, Ron Carlos, who's a potter in Salt River, Arizona. He was awarded in 2015. So just wanted to uplift Ron Carlos here, such a beautiful portrait. So the uh, this particular award, you might be asking, who is this application designed for? So this is specifically for traditional and folk life artists. Uh, these could be artisans, weavers, basket makers, jewelers, mask makers, uh, those that you might typically think of as traditional artists, but also occupational folk life artists such as adobe brick makers who are following a tradition, uh, leather workers, iron workers, um, those working in traditional types of food and that are carrying on a specific tradition, oral traditions, storytellers, musicians, poets, and performers and those related to performance such as um, dancers, um, musicians, and um, drummers, and those that might be me creating traditional regalia for, uh, for dance or for other sacred rituals and ritual objects. So again, traditional folk arts, uh, traditional artists are also part of, this is actually not quite worded right, but uh, folk artists are, um, we use the terms interchangeably, traditional artists and folk artists. And, um, these are, are those that are learning from within their community, usually, and are passing on this cultural community knowledge, rather than in a formal educational setting. Uh, and that's how they originally have learned their forms. And such forms of art reflect community values, experiences, a worldview uh, that can include such things as crafts, music, and storytelling, and those things that we discussed earlier. And I, I just want to emphasize that this, this particular award aims to support the transmission and preservation of traditional heritage-based practices that are learned informally, and most importantly are embedded and are reflective of a group or community's identity and cultural expression repertoire. 
So now I'm just going to go briefly over how to how to nominate, how to actually go into the portal. Uh, some may not know how to do that. And most of this information, just so you'll know, is also on our website, in our guidelines. And I will also be recording. We're going to post this recording. So if you need to go back and review it, please feel free to do that. So everything is on our website. You can go to southwestfolklife.org. And you don't even have to type in this part. Just go over here to the uh, menu where it says Our Work and go down to Master Apprentice Award Program. And then there's information that I'm going over here on that page. But if you scroll to the bottom, there are guidelines which you can link to, which has a, a document or a PDF that goes over everything in the award process. But if you just want to work on the nomination part, that's fine too. And you just click on this nomination. And that will take you to our submittable portal. If you don't already uh, have a submittable account, it is free. It's a, just a grant making portal. And then uh, you would probably just need to enter your email and a name, and then it'll send you a link, and then you would re, uh, then you would go back in to uh, to the submittable, and you'll be taken directly through this link right here to the nomination form. So on the form itself, there are several things that are just like, you know, the name of the person, the traditional artist that you are nominating, or self-nominating, meaning you are writing it on behalf of yourself, and then there are three main parts that are uh, important for you to uh, understand. And so I'm gonna just go over them a little bit here. So the first main part is you will need to describe briefly the nominee's art form and include the number of years the master artist has been practicing and what his, her contributions I should say his, her, or they, their contributions are to folk and traditional arts. Um, so we tried to make it brief because we don't want people to like go, oh my God, we have to put it all in there. Because later you'll see there is an entire place where you can describe it in the full application. But in this part, it is important to um, describe what it is that you do and also how you learn that form and who were maybe the master artists or uh, people, aunts, uncles, relatives that you learned from. How did you learn this form? And how have you carried it into the work that you do today? Also important to keep in mind is how does your community hold you accountable to the aesthetic of your art form that you are continuing to practice? Are you in dialogue with them? And it is totally fine if you are of a diaspora. For example, I'm Japanese in Okinawa in America and I'm in a diaspora, I live here. Um, as long as uh, in your, if you are a traditional artist that you are able to talk about, how do you still have dialogue with that community? Maybe they're also here in, uh, in the Americas, but how do you um, continue to stay true to your form through, through dialogue with them? The second part that's important is that, oh, I have this in the wrong order. Um, there'll be a section where you can just put in supportive materials. This is just so that we can get a better sense of what it is that you do. This might include a bio. It can, it, it maybe you don't need to if you prefer to just put in some work samples. If you want to put in some links to social media like Facebook or other forms, that is also okay as long as it's a very specific link so we know what we're looking at. And uh, you would upload up to five things here. So one might be a document with your bio or, uh, or, or and four that are uh, some other type of supportive material uh, like uh, work samples or all five might be work samples. So you can just drag and drop them right into this little box. So choose file actually means drag it in there or you can click on it and select it from your desktop. Um, I'm going to go back because I had these in the wrong order. I made a, a small box below that section where you can actually drop in URLs. So meaning website uh, links that are very specific. So go to where what you want us to see on your computer and copy and paste the actual address onto this little box and just put one on each line or how many you have. But again, this adds, we can have up to five items total. 
The third part that's uh, very important is to have a letter of support. Now at this stage, it could be if you are self-nominating, it could be a letter from you. That is totally fine. It is also all right to have another letter or it could be and or. It is, you could have a letter from someone from the community that talks about your work, maybe talks about how you engage with community and your um, how you were appointed to as a traditional artist, a master in your form. So you can have up to two letters of support. Um, it could be, again, from you self-nominating and or can be from another community member. So at this point, I can, I'm going to take a little pause and we can talk about because uh, the next part I'll be talking about is the full application process. So I wanted to get a sense from you if you are there any questions. And if you if you're having trouble unmuting, please just wave your hand and I'll fix that. Is everyone good? Nelda was oh yes, yes, please. Hi there. Um I'm nice to meet you all, Jenny Gupner. Um, I had emailed uh, one of you, I think, asking about whether there'd ever been a master apprentice working with children um, as opposed to adults. And then I maybe wanted to extend that question as have there ever been master apprentice relationships where it was a husband and wife um, learning, teaching one another? Nelda, do you want to respond to that? Sure. So for the children, did you get your response on the children question? No, I don't think so. Okay, so no, typically based on previous experiences, we typically limit the age to 16 for an apprentice. However, if there's certain rites of passages or different rituals that require um, a young person to, trans to, to transmit that knowledge for a certain uh, ceremony, then the case can be built in, in that case if it's somebody under 16. But typically it's 16 or, or older. And I'm sorry, I just got a message that my internet connection is unstable. So apologies oh. if I freeze. Did you catch that? What yeah, I share clearly. Awesome. And then as far as a married couple, yes, we have had uh, an instance where there is a master artist who is the, the teacher and the apprentice is the spouse. Um, again, it all depends on the way that you describe your working relationship in the application, which Denise will get to as far as what those questions ask. But yes, most definitely that's, that's a, a great candidate. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you for that question. And actually we might be able to respond a little bit more to it in, by looking at the full application. So is everybody good? Pretty good so far? Okay, so I'm gonna go over this part a little bit briefly because just for sake oh, of time. Oh yes, sorry, yes, Denise, yes, yes, yes. Denise, uh, other Denise, are you trying to unmute? Do you have a question? Yes. Oh, okay. Let Let's see, see if we can unmute you on this end. Let's try, hold on. Oh, there you go. I figured it out. Uh, hi, so Denise. My, hi, so my question is, since that question was asked by sister, um, is it possible to also be an apprentice? Um, I teach West African dance and um, recently I've been blessed enough to rejoin a black church and the majority of the members are elders. Um, so I'm feeling that this is a way for me to reconnect what has been banned for us to do which is African dance and drumming. And so finally, I'm seeing an opportunity to uh, bring the drum and the dance back into our worship. Um, so I wanted to know whether or not I as, uh, I'm, I'm officially an elder myself now, but um, whether or not I can be the apprentice for the church, is this acceptable? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely, Denise. Uh, there is no age limits at all um, on any of any side, whether the apprentice or the master artist. It's just the apprentice, we do ask that it's 16 and over. But other than that, 
it's completely open. So yes, please. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Please, please do apply. And Denise, I know we talked earlier by email. If you want to discuss a little bit more after this recording session, we'd be happy to talk. Yes, I would love that. Thank you very much. Okay. Fantastic. Okay. So um, I'm going to just go briefly over the application process and um, and all of this again is in the guidelines. So if you see a lot of words coming up, just remember it's in the guidelines. You don't have to read it all right now. So let me see. So the um, there are three questions that the master artist will be responding to that might be you or the person you're nominating in the full application process. Oh, and I should say that this will be two weeks, two weeks after you uh, turn in your nomination form, you will get a response inviting you uh, if you are invited to complete a full application or not. And these are the questions that will be in it, including just an expansion of what you've already been talking about, describing your form and how you, how you learned it, who you learned from, um, describing the traditions that you teach, that you will be teaching to the apprentice, and why you think this apprentice is an appropriate fit. So thinking about, um, is the apprentice at a level where they can learn from you and are they ready for this, uh, for this process? And, um, oh, and also there will be a section where you can describe more about the process that you would like to do with your apprentice. And we try to leave that open to you because uh, culturally different artists have different ways of sharing this process. It might be like day one, two, three, four, we do five hours a day or one hour a day, but it could also be a very experiential way of learning that takes time and is built and embedded uh, in a different way than say a Western culture. Um, and then the apprentices will also fill out on the same application, we'll fill out their section, which in which they describe why they're interested in working with this traditional master artist and what they hope to learn. And also to describe their level of, um, of skill level in um, the form, the art form that the master apprentice wants, the master wants to teach them. So this is important. They need to be at an intermediate level in the art form that the master would like to teach them in. So this is some of the uh, review criteria and um, it's mainly three sections that the panel is um, reviewing and evaluating the application on. So 60% is the mastery of tradition and cultural communities connections. So again, um, the level of the master artists work but also their connection to the community and how they um, how they are in dialogue with their community and how the community holds them accountable to their aesthetic. Uh, and 20% is the apprentice's ability and dedication to the art form that the master would like to teach them. And also 20% on a work plan, however you would like to describe that. Um, and then apprentices again need to be at intermediate level and have an interest in learning. And um, yeah, a commitment to the demands of the apprenticeship. Um, so Nelda, I, I know that there, there was this here and I actually don't <laughs> know what this is because it was, Nelda made this fantastic PowerPoint. So you need to explain this. No, yes. So one of the requirements for the application is submitting work samples, right? And the panelists will review, <clears throat> we convene about five to seven uh, panelists to review all the applications and review the criteria that Denise just mentioned. And the panelists are composed of different community members, uh, folks from the region. We also sometimes bring partners from outside of Tucson who are involved in traditional arts. Um, but one of the things that all panelists look forward to are the work samples, of course. And here we wanted to show, uh, and I don't wanna say bad work samples, right? But we wanted to show what work samples makes an application stronger. So for example, here in the first image, you'll see this was for, uh, a seamstress who made 
uh, the the dresses for different folklorico dancing groups. So here in this first image is one work sample, right? And and just for for context, they are uh, looking at a, a plant. It's before a showcase, and you get a good idea of the the stitching patterns, the fabric, the images, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a really great work sample because it's a full image. You can see uh, pretty much from head to toe. Whereas here in the middle picture, for example, that date kind of throws people off, right? And this is where the conversation about aesthetics come into play and what, what a, what visualizations or what samples you're using to to represent your art form so for example this picture on the left would make an application stronger than the picture in the in the middle for example and we do recognize that uh people artists don't need to have professional portraits right to submit as, as their work samples something that I want to mention that's really important we do recognize that and we don't ask that but we just ask applicants to be to be cautious of what they're submitting uh, to be attentive of what they're submitting to also recognize that that's what folks are going to be seeing and and interpreting as your form. And then this photo at the end, also a good, a good, it's a semi good work sample. It's a little dark. You can't really see all the details in the dress. Um, you have to get really close to be able to determine like where the arm cuts off and where the skirt stretches. I think those are birds. But again, because it's so dark, you can't really appreciate right the the beauty and and all the intricate details that go into the dress for example in this first image where it's light where there's more than one it's from head to toe you have a, a larger grasp on the on the actual art piece thank you nelda and yes and also for videos if you perhaps don't have a video already iPhones and other smartphones have become amazing. So even just video, having a friend videotape you that way and uploading that even to a social media website so and linking to it is helpful. Um, in particular in live performance, if you don't have something already. Okay. Um, Denise, oh, if I can yes, just also yes. add, and just also being cognizant that the sample you submit is relevant to the art form that you're applying for. Um, also, when it comes down to audio files or video, just ensuring that that audio quality is good, um, making sure that there's not like background noises that are very loud that will deter from being able to really absorb the beauty of those melodies or those instruments is also important and makes an application stronger. So just wanted to add those details, talking about not just visuals, but also video and sound. Yes, thank you so much. And, um, and oh, we should also point out that the nomination part uh, is if, if the panel at the full application point would like to look back for clarification or anything, they might be looking at your nomination form and your letters of support and work samples there. During the full application process, you will also have another opportunity to put forth work samples and possibly another letter of support if you only had one originally. So here's the timeline. Um, right now, the main impending deadline is the May 15th one and then we send an invitation for full application on the 31st. July 31st is the full application deadline followed by award notifications in the fall. Um, and if I wanna also, just while I'm thinking about it, I just wanna say that if there is a problem when you're uh, doing your submission through Submittable, please let us know right away. You can always email me uh, or call me or text me at this direct line or my email. Um, Submittable is not perfect. It's pretty good, but we just want to make sure that you don't feel discouraged 
if something happens, if you're logged out of the application for some reason, or say you submit it and you're like, oh no, I needed to add something before the deadline, please let us know. Um, so let me see if there's anything else. Um, oh, and again, I will will be posting this video 